What up, what up, Salvador Brigman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demons Find YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about crowdfunding, and specifically today, I wanna to get into Indiegogo and some of the best practices out there for this platform. So Indiegogo is obviously one of Kickstarter's competitors, and it's actually one of the original crowdfunding sites uh, that kind of pioneered the entire space. And I think it's really important to talk about the best practices so you can be more successful in launching a new campaign so you can get those results that you've been looking for, you can blow past your funding meter, and you can actually have a successful campaign. So that's what we are covering in today's video and it's coming up right after this. All right, so let's get into some of those best practices when it comes to Indiegogo and launching an Indiegogo campaign. So for those of you out there, you might be launching a campaign in the technology category, in the gadget category, in the design category, uh, maybe something that's more artistic, maybe a comic book, maybe a tabletop game, maybe even something that's more like a film project, right? There's so many different types of categories when it comes to launching an Indiegogo campaign. So we're gonna really try to create a video that addresses everyone and really gives you a bit of a nuance as well when it comes to launching a new project with crowdfunding. So let's kind to start off here, I think that this is the biggest one that you should really be thinking of. And if you're trying to really master anything out there, we're trying to become better at playing tennis or golf, or you're trying to you know get better even like jujitsu, whatever, right? You really want to study the greats. You want to understand people who have been successful before you. If you're coming out with a new product, it doesn't make sense to reinvent the wheel. The wheel was invented thousands and thousands of years ago. You don't gotta reinvent that sucker. Some other caveman figured out how to make fire. You can just use that in your manufacturing process. You don't gotta actually invent fire again. So to me, the first step in terms of the best practice is to look at other campaigns in your category that have been successful and really identify those, put those into a spreadsheet or a Google Doc of some kind and really get a clear understanding of what did they do when it comes to their video, when it comes to their campaign page, the way they did communications, how much did they raise, what kind of funding goal did they set. The more information which you can actually gather from just having a KPI campaign, I call it, the easier you're gonna have a chance of actually discovering what went into that successful campaign. So that's best practice number one. And I think that this is uh, literally one of the most important things which you can do. And it's also a practice that I always do, right? When I'm investigating different crowdfunding campaigns is to pick out a campaign that you want to emulate or that you really admire in some way and you love the way they did their marketing. Really pick out a campaign that speaks to you. The second best practice has to do with your funding goal. So if you're launching a new Indigo campaign, the funding goal is one of the most important pieces of launching a campaign. The funding goal goal is what you actually have to hit or exceed in order to keep the funds which you've raised. Or if you're doing keep what you raise, then it doesn't matter as much. However, it's gonna create the perception of, oh my gosh, I only raised 500 bucks and my goal is 10,000. You have to be very strategic about the funding goal which you set when it comes to an Indiegogo campaign. So I'm not talking about uh, flexible funding, which is keep what you raise on Indiegogo. I'm talking about fixed funding campaigns. Really, you have to raise this amount or more in order to actually keep those funds. When it comes to these styles, of campaigns, the best practice that I want to mention in this video is the fact that you have to set a low funding goal that allows you to complete the project, but that also is low and realistic, and then you can smash through quickly, and you'll notice this as well when you're looking at other Indiegogo campaigns. If you've been browsing the web and you've been looking at other Indiegogo campaigns, you probably notice many of them have low funding goals, and there's a reason behind this. The reason behind this is that it's easy to hit, smash through, hit the algorithm, which is the Gogo Factor Indiegogo algorithm, and start to actually trend on the charts when it comes to Indiegogo. And then you start to have tons of strangers actually supporting this campaign. So so to me, this is one of the most important components and uh, I would say as a best practice, setting a low goal is a marketing exercise. And as long as you can do it and ideally fulfill and be realistic about it, I think it makes a lot of sense to do. The next best practice has to do with the actual funding duration of your Indiegogo campaign. So by funding duration, I mean how much or how long are you running this campaign for? Is that gonna be 20 days? Is it gonna be 30 days? Is it gonna be 60 days? What is the actual funding duration behind this Indiegogo campaign? So as a best practice, I would recommend setting at least around a 30 day funding duration. For some people out there, I might recommend a 45 day duration. If you have a great marketing strategy and you have things that are gonna actually be happening or a 60 day one, if you have a really rock solid marketing strategy to maintain interest and attention over 60 days. But all the time, I will have people book a call with me and they'll be like, Sal, I wanna keep this sucker open forever. I want people to be supporting this, 
backing this. I want this to be a very long funding duration. And what I always say to that person is like, it makes sense like in your head. Why not keep this open forever? Allow people to raise funding and get funding towards you forever, right? Or actually support or donate or back this for until the end of time. The problem is that the number one thing that gets people to take action, not only with marketing, but in your everyday life is urgency. The emotion of urgency is what gets people to take action. Great example of this, I went to college or went to school at George Washington University in Washington, DC. And it's a great college, love you know going obviously and learning a lot, I studied economics. But one of the things I hated doing, which I'm sure you might relate with, is having to write papers, right? Academic, boring, dry academic papers. Oh, it was just the worst, right? So boring. But what I would do is I would procrastinate until literally the day before the paper is due, stay up super late, drink like three cups of coffee, right? Stay up late, write the whole thing in one night and then hand it in. And why did I do that? Why did it take so much action, have so much energy in such a short time period, you know, of over six hours, maybe five hours? Reason why is I had urgency. So when there's no urgency with a campaign, people are not likely to back it. They're gonna go and check something else out that has more urgency. And they're gonna give their time and attention to that thing. So it's so important as a best practice to set a realistic uh, funding duration, one that also creates urgency and one that makes people take action. The next best practice has to do with the actual video. So the video of the Indigo campaign is one of the most important pieces of the campaign because it's what people see before they actually back the project. So I think that one of the biggest myths or one of the biggest issues or one of the biggest things that's out there is like, hey, have an incredible video that's like whiz bang graphics and it's great and I go and check this out and it seems like, like this massive epic of a video, but the thing is like eight minutes long, right? It's better for you to go short than it is for you to go long. So as a sweet spot, when it comes to Indiegogo, when it comes to really making sure that you're going within the sweet spot I'm about to mention is such a huge best practice that I wanna mention on this video. And that's making sure you're going between two and a half minutes to three and a half minutes. Now, some people might be out of that. Some people might be shorter. Look at the actual, again, go back to step number one. Look and compare to the other campaigns that are out there. Typically, if they're going longer, it's also engaging in some way, or they fell flat and it didn't go well, right? As a campaign, you can only go longer when you can make it really engaging, because otherwise, it's gonna be extremely difficult to maintain people's attention. Want to take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from Fulfillrite today. Link in the description. The next best practice that I want to mention on this video has to do with the actual campaign page. So the campaign page is kind of like an extension, if you will, of the actual video, which people see, they go there, they click that sucker, they watch your video, and then they scroll down the campaign page. Uh, you know, I would say noteworthy or important best practice that I've come across when it comes to my students, when it comes to people I've helped with, when it comes to even just interviewing so many different podcast guests over the years, is you gotta pay attention to that campaign page. And most importantly, you wanna think visually. Back in the days, you could just write a really long campaign page. I remember, I was there, I was in the industry since 2012, right? I remember you could have just long campaign pages without any kind of graphics and it was fine. You could get the thing funded. Nowadays, you have to have at least some GIFs, some graphics, um, maybe even a little bit of video on that campaign page because again, it's about being emotionally engaging. It's not just communicating, you know, between uh, one person who's selling something or one person who's trying to raise money for something and someone else. It's not just dry text. It's not a business plan, right? This is more of a consumer pitch. And in order to make that pitch actually land, you gotta have some engaging photos, engaging GIFs, maybe even some video on that campaign page to really make the thing pop and come off the page. The next best practice has to do with rewards, also known as perks. So I will sometimes have someone who will book a call, uh, one of the students, and they'll be like, Sal, I got this great idea for some rewards. I'm like, that's awesome, man. Like, what are you thinking? And he's like, dude, I'm gonna give away some t-shirts and some mugs and some pens. And I will say that there are some categories where that works. However, I would say as a general best practice, giving away things like pens and knickknacks, like t-shirts and that, like stickers, like that kind of stuff, it usually doesn't go over very well nowadays when it comes to Indigo campaigns and when it comes to crowdfunding. So I would say as a best practice, you always wanna get the closest to what the actual product is. So if you're raising money, for example, to make a prototype and take that prototype to production stage, 
stage, you wanna offer the product as the actual reward. Um, if you're inventing something new, for example, like you come up with a new film, the best reward, the ones can be most popular, is if you have a reward where you can actually go and watch that film in some way. Now, there are, again, categories that kind of go a little bit juxtaposed or a little bit different than this particular reward rule. And myself, dude, I love, like, if you look at a really great pen, like this is one of my favorite pens. This is actually a gift, and it has an incredible quote on it. This is by Henry David Thoreau, which is a great author, a transcendentalist, right? Love this guy. He says, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Live the life you've always imagined. Like that just gets me excited and revved up. Like every day I come to work, like I'm like, man, I'm, I'm so excited to go to that next level and to really unlock my own potential and help thousands of people out there as well hit their potential when it comes to crowdfunding. However, if you have a gadget, a gizmo, a product of some kind, a company, most often people don't wanna just own the swag of your company. So you wanna have some reward or a perk that's more directly related to what it is that you're actually creating. The only thing I will say that's kind of different, like I was mentioning, than this is if you have, you're creating intellectual property. So for example, if you're creating like a movie or a story or characters, at that point in time, they might be interested in owning a mug with that character or an interesting saying or a poster of some kind. But for the vast majority, that is my best practice. The next best practice I want to mention in this video also has to do with how do you hit your goal quickly? And that's gonna be no matter what kind of campaign category you're doing, you 100% should do a pre-launch before you go live with your crowdfunding campaign. Now the pre-launch is actually something that I pioneered and actually put into my book, the Kickstarter launch formula. The Kickstarter launch formula also applies to Indiegogo and is a paint by numbers formula which you can follow in order to get funded when it comes to your crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo or on Kickstarter. And it's available on Audible and also you can grab a paperback version. It will include a link down below to the Kickstarter launch formula. With that being said, if you don't do a pre-launch, you're not gonna be able to get people backing this campaign immediately so you trend on the charts when it comes to Indiegogo. So a pre-launch is incredibly valuable. And what you do is you build up a small community ahead of time and there are strategy and techniques to actually do this. But if you do this, then you can get people supporting it immediately and you can actually start trending on Indiegogo itself. It's kind of like bringing your own crowd, a small crowd to that platform so that way you can engage the larger crowd. There are three more best practices I wanted to include in this video because I really want to pack in a couple uh, just to kind of get you jump started when it comes to your Indiegogo campaign. So the first one I want to mention really quickly is that if you do what I mentioned when it comes to a pre-launch, when it comes to the funding duration, you're not only gonna have people showing up immediately, but also have urgency. And what that then creates is this third kind of a word, which is called momentum. So when you have momentum at the end of the campaign, you can then go and use this next best practice, which is to go into Indiegogo in demand, and you can continue to raise funds. I have clients and students who've been in Indiegogo in demand for multiple months, leading up to them maybe launching their own website or their own Shopify store or their own Wix store or whatever it is. So you can use Indiegogo in demand. That is my next best practice if you have momentum. The next practice I wanted to mention, and the reason why I'm mentioning this is that so many people who launch Indiegogo campaigns are business creators, are innovators, are uh, entrepreneurs, you know, people who are more so trying to build something, create something to actually impact the world. But so often we don't spend enough time thinking about marketing. So as a best practice, you absolutely must have a marketing strategy for when you go live with this Indiegogo campaign. And ah, like just thinking about it kind of like gets me a little bit frustrated because I see people who have such incredible products, but they don't have a great marketing strategy to combine with that product so not enough people see it and it doesn't get funded or at least to the level that it should be. So it, it's really frustrating for me because it's like, gosh, if we had more cool products like this in the world, it would make the world such a better place as well, right? And it says a great thing as well about crowdfunding and it's like, it's a good karmic cycle. But if you don't pay attention to this early on, if you don't have a solid marketing strategy, how are people going to find out about this beyond Indiegogo? What are you gonna do? What are the different channels you're gonna engage? What are those messages are gonna be? Your digital marketing strategy is so incredibly pivotal, but if you don't have that assembled, that's gonna be like bad, bad news bear, right? So you wanna have a digital marketing strategy, that is my next uh, best practice. My final best practice for you has to do with the actual uh, length of this campaign. So for example, you're usually doing a pre-launch and uh, typically that pre-launch is probably lasting between 
one to three months. I've seen some freelancers that are even five months or six months, but I'd say one to three is the median or the average. Then you're doing a campaign, it's probably 30 days, maybe it goes to 45, right? And then you're fulfilling your rewards. Uh, fulfilling your rewards typically is gonna be between two to four months. I've seen people do it faster or people who are shipping it immediately, and I've seen people go longer. I would say an average is two to four months, and the best practice there is you need to be communicating with these backers, with these people who you've attracted to actually support your campaign, to support your creation, support your innovation. You gotta make sure you're communicating with them without, with, throughout that time period, and also for any kind of delays or issues that kind of crop up. For example, there's a, your factory burns down, right? Or something happens with your initial pallet that you're sending over. You gotta communicate with those backers, let them know what's happening, keep them appraised, and it creates a heck of a lot of transparency with your brand. Finally, if you wanna discuss your project in depth, if you really wanna go through the nitty gritty of how to launch your campaign successfully, and really go through when it comes to your specific category, what you're trying to achieve, how much you're trying to raise, the marketing strategy behind that, you can book a individual one-on-one -on -one coaching call with me at the link down below. And that will take you to a form where you can fill out some information, you can let me know what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish, tell me more about your product and what your expectations are, and we can get that call scheduled ASAP at the link down below at crowdcrux.com slash coaching. In addition, for those of you that are just kind of in that educational stage, go and check out my free course. I got a free course out there on Kickstarter and Indiegogo, which I will also link up down below, and my book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you feel more confident about launching a campaign. It gets those wheels turning, and there is a science to getting funded. And I'm really trying to demystify that for you on a weekly basis on this channel. And if you do enjoy that, if you do think I'm doing a good job, come subscribe so I have more great content to share with you on a weekly basis. And you can hit that like button as well if you want to uh, show your support. Thank you so much again. My name is Salvador Brigman, and I will see you next time.